Over the last week, I've been using the LG Nexus 5X as my main phone. Today, I decided to talk about the specifications of the phone and review them to let people know if it's worth buying. This is the Nexus 5X specs video. Hello everybody, this is Matt from Real World Review, and what I'm going to do is go over the specs of the phone, and at the end, I will score the phone based on my personal experiences as a user and cell phone repairman. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section or on Twitter at Matt of RWR. Let's get started. To start, our first category is the outside hardware. Let's start with the display. The display is a 5.2 inch IPS LCD screen with a resolution of 1080 by 1920, totaling 423 pixels per inch. Of a screen brightness of about 486 nits, it's actually brighter than the Nexus 6P. There is Corning Gorilla Glass covering the LCD display, and that makes the front scratch resistant. The screen to body ratio is about 70%, and the touch buttons are on the screen. Let's talk about the rest of the front. We start at the top where the earpiece and the sensors are. There is a speaker grill that covers the earpiece along with a microphone, and to the left of that is a 5 megapixel front camera. Below that to the right are the proximity and ambient light sensors. On the bottom portion there is the only loudspeaker on the phone. Unlike the Nexus 6P, the phone does not have dual front-facing speakers. Moving on to the frame. On the bottom is a USB-C 2.0 port, a microphone, and a headset jack. On the right side there are volume buttons and a power button. On the left side there is a SIM card tray. And on the top of the device is a single hole for the loudspeaker microphone. On the plastic back of the device is a large 12.3 megapixel camera protruding out of the back, along with a dual LED flash unit and a laser autofocus component. Below that is a fingerprint reader and a large Nexus logo. That's about it. As for the size, the device is 147 millimeters tall, 72.6 millimeters wide, and 7.9 millimeters thick, or 5.79 inches tall, 2.86 inches wide, and 0.31 inches thick. As for the weight, the Nexus 5X is 136 grams, or 4.8 ounces. The phone is not water resistant and does not have a user removable battery or back. And now we move on to the cameras. The rear camera is a 12.3 megapixel sensor with a dual LED flash. The aperture is f2.0 and the pixel size is 1.55 micrometers. The phone supports different camera features like laser autofocus, panorama, photosphere, and high dynamic range. The rear camera can record video in some limited ways. You can record 4K at 30 frames per second, 1080p at 30 frames per second, 720p at 30 frames per second, and slow motion video can be captured at only 720p at 120 frames per second. The front camera is a 5 megapixel sensor with a f2.0 aperture and the pixel size is 1.4 micrometers. It allows for a max of 1080p recording at 30 frames per second. The next category is the inside hardware. As usual, we start with the processor. The processor in this phone is a 64-bit Qualcomm Snapdragon 808 chip. It is a 20 nanometer hexa-core processor with two cores running at 1.82 gigahertz and four cores running at 1.44 gigahertz. Geekbench gives the phone a score of around 1,185 for the single core test and 2,074 for the multi-core test. The GPU is a Adreno 418 that runs at 600 megahertz. While testing the GPU, Geekbench gives a score of about 3,604. The phone has 2GB of LPDDR3 RAM, which isn't anything crazy by today's standards. The model I'm reviewing is the H790, which is factory unlocked. The phone supports 1G, 2G, 3G, and 4G, assuming that the market that you're in still supports those, along with LTE bands 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 12, 13, 17, 20, 25, 26, 29, and 41. As for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the Wi-Fi chip is an 802.11 ABGNAC 2x2 MIMO, and the Bluetooth is version 4.2. The phone also supports NFC, GPS, and GLONASS. The battery is a 2700 milliamp lithium ion cell, which is supposed to last all day. Google claims that the battery will give you up to 20 hours of talk time and about 17 and a half days of standby time. The USB-C port does support a specific type of fast charging and will give you 4 hours of usage with 10 minutes of charging, according to Google. Sadly, there is no wireless charging even though the back is plastic. The phone comes out of the box with Android 6.0 Marshmallow and was updated to Android 8.1 Oreo. This will most likely be the last major software update for this phone. 
The phone supports a few different audio formats like FLAC, MP3, M4A, and WAV. As for video playback, the phone supports a few formats like H.264 and MPEG-4. Now that we've gone over the specs of the phone, it's time for me to give this phone a score. Note that this phone comes with 16 or 32 gigabytes and cannot be purchased new anymore, but can be found used for about $150. It should also be noted that this phone is 2 years old and most people will want to buy this phone used, and the scoring does account for that. Let's start with the frame. The phone is made out of plastic and glass. The front is mainly glass, but the back is plastic, which is surprisingly durable. There isn't an issue with bending, but it is very flexible. It is common for the screen to crack, but it will be very cheap for the screen to be replaced. More on that in the basics video. The back camera has a camera lens that is actually lower than the back of the phone, which is pretty nice. It makes it that much more difficult to break the camera lens. The phone is not supposed to be premium, but it is built properly and doesn't feel flimsy. Overall, I will give the outside hardware a 7.25 out of 10. Next is the screen. I'm not really a fan of IPS LCD displays, and this one did not impress me. With this said, the screen quality is very similar to the iPhone 7 in color and brightness. For a 1080p screen, I'm a little disappointed, but I understand that it had to be done to keep the price down. With this said, the 5.2 inch screen seems to be the perfect size. I never had any issues with the size of the screen, and my hands never felt cramped when using this phone. This phone is supposed to be an upgrade from the Nexus 5, but it seems like all they did with the screen is make it slightly larger. Regardless, the screen isn't that bad for the price, so I will give it a 7 out of 10. Next is the inside hardware. The Snapdragon 808 processor is fast to a point, but it also is a major flaw for this phone. While this may not affect all phones, the model is known for overheating and causing the phone to loop the boot screen indefinitely. This phone experienced both issues and continues to heat up. I had to send this phone to LG once, and I actually had to send another phone to LG for the second time. There is a small amount of RAM in this phone and it does lag a little bit, but that might be because it's on the newest software. The 2700mAh battery seems small, but it does last all day. With that said, this phone has the worst battery life that I've seen in a phone in the last couple of years. This battery is a couple years old, so I shouldn't complain too much, but still. There is support for only one SIM card and no support for a memory card. This may not be an issue, but after installing a few apps, I was left with 20GB of storage on this 32GB phone. I can only imagine how hard it would be for me to use a 16 gigabyte phone. With this said, this is supposed to be a budget phone, so 16 gigabytes may be good for some, but the price of the 32 gigabyte phones run about the same. The camera lacks optical image stabilization, which does not help for recording. Overall, I will give this phone a 7 out of 10 for the inside hardware. Next is the camera. The camera is not bad, but I wasn't too impressed. The back camera is the same exact Sony camera that was found in the Nexus 6P, so it isn't surprising that the video and picture quality is pretty much the same. The camera focus is very fast with laser autofocus, but it lacks image stabilization. Regardless, the 12.3 megapixel camera does support 4K at 30 frames per second, which is fine, but here's the thing. 720p, 1080p, and 4K can only be recorded at 30 frames per second. With the iPhone 6 capturing 1080p at 60 frames per second and the iPhone 8 capturing 4K at 60 frames per second, the Nexus 5X clearly is not the best for recording. The front camera is not that bad, and at 5 megapixels, it gets the job done. I would complain about this, but the LG G6 also has a 5 megapixel front camera, and it looks fine. With this said, the camera is average for 2017, but it still gets a 7.75 out of 10. Next is the software. The phone comes with Android 6.0 Marshmallow and has recently been upgraded to Android 8.1 Oreo. The Nexus phones are known to be highly customizable and are extremely easy to modify software wise. This phone is no different but for this review I kept the phone stock. The software is easy to use and there aren't too many confusing pieces of the software except for the settings. However the settings app does have a search option so that helps. Sure there are some things that are missing but the pure Android experience is refreshing. Since the fingerprint scanner will unlock the phone, there isn't a need for something like a physical button on the front or a way to double tap the screen to turn it on, unless you don't have your fingerprint set up. If you've used Android on Samsung or LG phones, you might get lost on this one, but stock Android makes this phone slightly faster than most Snapdragon 808 phones. Overall, I have no issues with this software, but this is most likely the last major software update that the Nexus 5X will get. The software never gets put into the scoring, but I will still give it a 9 out of 10. The last score is a future-proofing score. The phone came out a couple years ago, so most of the issues with this phone should have popped up by now. The major issues that happen with this phone are obviously the boot loop issue, battery issue, and the lack of external storage. 
The boot loop issue is generally caused by the processor or the battery. The Snapdragon 808 processor is known for overheating, so it isn't too surprising that these processors do fail. The phone that I'm using is 2 years old, and I've already sent this phone to LG for them to fix the processor. Also, the battery is miserable. The battery drains quickly, but this isn't too difficult to replace. Next, wireless charging, external storage, and optical image stabilization are all missing from this phone. OTG is supported through the USB-C port, but it isn't the same. This phone does have a USB-C charger, so it is ready for the future, but that's about it. It is already on Android Oreo and most likely will not see Android P, but that is okay. The Snapdragon 808 processor can somewhat handle Oreo, but there are times that it struggles to get the job done. It isn't supposed to be a crazy fast phone, so I can't complain too much about that. The score that I'm giving the future proofing section is a 5.5 out of 10. This phone is already near the end of its life. Add up the scores and the phone gets a 34.5 out of 50 or 69%. This phone is one of the most desired Nexus phones of its time and sadly it does not live up to the hype. At least to me it didn't. The software is lacking some features like LG's knock-on or an always-on display, but the phone can be rooted to allow for stuff like that. I waited for the phones to drop in price, and now that the phones are under $200, I think it's worth the purchase if you're looking for a mid-range phone. And that's it. Let me know what else you want me to review in the comments section below or on Twitter at MadOfRWR. And I have a question for you guys. Do you think that this phone is the upgrade the Nexus 5 deserved? Lastly, feel free to follow me on any of the social media listed above. Thanks for watching.